Since the album release of 90125 in 1983 and Big Generator in 1987, Yes reached the huge commercial success with their more direct material and made them one of the biggest band in the world. However, after completing the Big Generator tour, lead vocalist John Anderson left the band, marking his second exit since 1978. Anderson felt that the band had become too commercialized at the time, diverging from his understanding of what Yes music should be and guilty about it. Additionally, he also sensed that his contributions and decisions within the band were gradually being marginalized, which leading to his decision to leave. After going solo, Anderson released a pop album titled Into the City of Angels, but it didn't achieve the level of success he and the record company had looked for. By the summer of 1988, while on the Greek island of Isra, Anderson collaborated on music with Vangelis. It was there that a new idea began to take root in Anderson's mind. With the support of his wife at the time, he proposed the idea of reuniting with former Yes bandmates to create music once again. This included keyboardist Rick Wakeman, guitarist Steve Howe, and drummer Bill Bruford. These old friends of John had pursued individuals' projects or band activities since they leaving Yes. For instance, after Steve Howe left Yes in 1981, he was part of Asia and GTR during the 80s. Bill Bruford, on the other hand, joined King Crimson in the 1970s, participated in tours with Genesis, engaged in Gong, and organized projects such as Earthworks. As for Wakeman, his solo career faced challenges in the 80s, including personal issues such as alcoholism and financial difficulties, making this reunion seem almost inevitable. After John talked with Steve, Howe showed great interest for the project, he bringing in materials that left over from his time with Asia and GTR, such as parts of Brother of Mine. These materials helped solidify the sound of the new group. To avoid legal disputes from Mothership Yes, they named their group Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe. And to fill up the vacancy of the bass player, Bruford invited his bandmate from King Crimson, Tony Levin, to join them. The record company began spreading some news about the band before recording the material, kicking things into gear. Initially, the band discussed and recorded some potential material in Paris and moved to AIR Studios on the Caribbean island of Montserrat for recording afterward. However, due to personal reasons, Steve Howe chose to remain at studios in London and remotely completed his guitar parts. During their time on the island, the members used their free time to tour local attractions and landmarks and engage in cricket matches with local children. Those experiences create everlasting memories for them. In such an environment, they came out materials like The Meeting and the tropically inspired Teak Boy. The self-titled album was released on June 20, 1989 by Arista Records, featured wonderful artwork by Roger Dean. Album ranked 14th in the UK, 30th in the US, and sold over 750,000 copies worldwide. However, before the album's release, the band faced legal action from Yes regarding the use of the word yes in their promotion. Ultimately, the court ruled in their favor, allowing them to reference their own yes legacy for promotional purposes, swiftly resolving the dispute. Subsequently, the band changed the title of their tour from Yes Music Plus Night to An Evening of Yes Music Plus. The set list of the tour included materials from their new album, as well as some classics from Yes's 70s era, like Heart of the Sunrise and Close to the Edge, etc.
The tour proceeded smoothly and was warmly welcomed by fans. However, in March 1990, as the tour was nearing its end, Tony Levin was unable to participate due to his hepatitis condition. In that case, Jeff Berlin stepped in to replace him. Despite the significant pressure, Jeff did a wonderful work. The band reignited the influence of Yes music. They blended their individual musical characteristics and styles, attracting a large number of fans in their music. Now, as advertised, is Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe considered as Yes? One of the argument made by those who believe the band should be considered part of Yes is, they are original members of Yes and they maintain the structure and direction of Yes music. In the other hand, those who argue otherwise believe that Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe should be seen as an independent project because they differ from Yes in certain aspects and have their own musical style and the approach to composition. They are more like a supergroup rather than a conventional Yes band. This is perhaps one of the most contentious topics in the history of Yes. After several months of rest, some discussions regard the production of the second album begin. However, things did not proceed smoothly as a debut, eventually leading to the controversial release of the Union album, which followed the merger of the band and Yes in 1991. That's all for today's video. If you have any suggestions for backstory topics, feel free to let me know. Till next time.